When it comes to private space companies, most people immediately think of SpaceX, and understandably so. The company's list of achievements is so extensive that simply enumerating them could take up several pages. However, alongside SpaceX, another company has made remarkable strides in the space industry. Rocket Lab, often dubbed the second SpaceX in the small-scale rocket launch segment, Rocket Lab has carved out quite the niche for themselves. Recently, they unveiled an ambitious plan involving their new rocket, Neutron, promising to give Rocket Lab the ability to compete directly with SpaceX and cost its rivals hundreds of millions of dollars. Let's find out more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Rocket Lab is currently a private aerospace company that provides launch services and space system solutions for the space and defense industries. At present, Rocket Lab primarily launches the Electron rocket, a lightweight rocket that can recover its booster using parachutes. Although Electron has achieved significant success with 59 successful launches to date, it does not appear to be particularly cost-effective. For this reason, the company couldn't ignore the need for a larger rocket, one that is designed for frequent reusability with a focus on reducing costs and increasing launch frequency. And that rocket is Neutron. Neutron's Rocket Lab's most ambitious project to date, a partially reusable medium-lift rocket expected to debut in 2025 to compete with SpaceX's Falcon 9. In anticipation of this highly anticipated moment, the company recently released a payload user's guide serving as an introduction to the launch services of available on Rocket Lab's Neutron launch vehicle. This appears to be the company's first public step in preparing the Neutron rocket program as it enters the larger, more competitive market, one where securing customer contracts will be fiercer than ever. In this publicly available document for potential customers, Rocket Lab outlines the full operational process and advantages of Neutron for payload launches. With its sleek black exterior, Neutron's first stage is fully reusable and constructed from carbon composite materials. It features nine C-level Archimedes engines and utilizes a common bulkhead tank for its LOX and methane propellants. A distinctive feature of Neutron's design is its captive fairing, which remains attached throughout flight and recovery. The entire launch vehicle returns to the landing site as a single unit, including the extended interstage assembly and the captive payload fairings. The first stage has a tapered profile and incorporates aerodynamic control surfaces such as forward canards and landing legs, which enhance stability and control during descent. These elements, combined with a low ballistic coefficient that reduces aerothermal stress, enable the first stage to glide back to Earth for a controlled landing. To withstand the extreme heat of re-entry, the first stage's thrust structure is coated with a highly efficient reusable TPS. This advanced heat shield technology, originally developed and tested on the Electron, makes it possible to recover composite boosters from near-orbital velocities. Neutron's second stage is also made of carbon composite and is powered by a single vacuum optimized Archimedes engine. Like the first stage, it features common bulkhead tanks for the LOX and methane. Designed for maximum efficiency and cost-effectiveness, the second stage is expendable and can be reignited multiple times for constellation deployment and an extended on-orbit operations. Uniquely, the second stage is encapsulated in the first stage and suspended by its top flange inside the interstage at a rigid mounting interface. This configuration provides a compact and accessible location for avionics, aerodynamics control mechanisms, and fluid lines while minimizing the structural demands on the second stage during ascent. A pneumatic impulse system ensures rapid and efficient stage separation, reducing shock and acceleration loads. The internal travel of the second stage during deployment helps maintain low tip-off rates, preventing payload recontact and ensuring a smooth transition to orbit. While Neutron's first stage is fully reusable, the second stage will either be left in space or set to burn up in Earth's atmosphere. This approach is similar to what SpaceX currently does with the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, as well as what Blue Origin aims to achieve with New Glenn. Rocket Lab's engineers have dedicated significant effort to refining the upper stage over the last several years, including optimizing its liquid methane and LOX propellant tanks. Since the upper stage is not reusable, the goal is to design it to be as cost-efficient 
as possible. At the same time, it must be highly efficient. Every kilo of mass allocated to the upper stage structure is a kilogram of lost payload capacity. One particularly noteworthy aspect that cannot be overlooked is Neutron's landing approach. Rocket Lab's Neutron rocket employs two distinct mission profiles for reusability, each offering unique advantages and operational considerations. The return to launch site RTLS profile represents perhaps the most straightforward recovery approach. After the second stage separates to continue its journey to orbit, the first stage booster executes a complex series of maneuvers to reverse trajectory. It reorients itself and fires its engines to fly back to Launch Complex 3 in Virginia, where it makes a precision landing. This approach eliminates the need for marine recovery and allows for rapid inspection and processing of the return booster. The downrange landing DRL profile takes a different approach, prioritizing payload over operational simplicity. Instead of going back to the launch site, the booster continues along its flight path and lands on a marine vessel in the ocean. This trajectory needs less fuel for the landing maneuver since the booster doesn't need to fly back to the launch site, allowing more of the rocket's performance to be dedicated to delivering the payload to orbit. Each profile requires sophisticated guidance and control systems to manage the complex dynamics of bringing a large rocket booster back to Earth safely. The booster must navigate through varying atmospheric conditions, manage its remaining propellant precisely, and execute burns with perfect timing to achieve its intended landing target whether on land or at sea. The dual profile capability gives Rocket Lab important mission planning flexibility. For customers requiring maximum payload capacity, the DRL profile can be employed to take full advantage of the rocket's performance. When rapid turnaround is prioritized and payload requirements are less demanding, the RTLS profile offers a more streamlined operational approach. The engineering challenges of implementing these recovery profiles have influenced Neutron's design from the ground up. Unlike some earlier reusable rockets that were adapted from expendable designs, Neutron was conceived with reusability as a core requirement. This fundamental design philosophy is evident in features such as its thermal protection systems, which enable it to withstand re-entry and its wide base, enhancing landing stability. The landing legs are designed to extend outward at the base, providing additional support. This design choice aligns with the company's current plan to land the vehicle at greater distances, primarily on a drone ship more frequently. Beyond these unique aspects, Neutron has been an ambitious rocket from the get-go, promising to introduce standout technology in the space industry. At the core of Neutron's innovation lies the use of the state-of-the-art 3D printing technology. Rocket Lab uses the biggest 3D printer in the world, a 12-meter tall, 90-ton, fully automated machine capable of producing carbon fiber composite structures at an impressive rate of 100 meters a minute. The adoption of carbon fiber composites provides substantial Substantial advantages over traditional materials like stainless steel commonly used in rockets like Starship. Carbon fiber composites are lighter while maintaining strength and durability needed to withstand the harsh conditions of space. The reduction in overall weight enhances payload capacity, improves engine efficiency, and saves on fuel. Besides, one of Neutron's standout features is its unique clamshell fairing design. Unlike regular rockets where the fairing separates and falls away after launch, Neutron's fairing opens like a clamshell and stays attached to the rocket throughout the flight. This design offers several advantages. First, retaining the fairing protects the rocket's second stage and payload from atmospheric stress during ascent, allowing the second stage to be built lighter and more efficiently. This lighter design translates to improved payload delivery capabilities, enabling Neutron to carry heavier cargo or reach farther orbits more effectively. Furthermore, the clamshell fairing is fully reusable, reducing operational costs and environmental impact by eliminating the need for disposable components. Powering Neutron are the Archimedes engines, which are designed for longevity and efficiency. Rocket Lab has opted to operate these engines at 90% of their max capacity instead of pushing them to the limit. This approach offers several benefits. Operating at reduced capacity reduces engine wear and tear, extending lifespan and lowering maintenance requirements. It also enhances the reusability of the engine without compromising performance. Combined with Neutron's lightweight design, the Archimedes engines achieve superior payload 
thrust ratio, making the rocket highly competitive in the fast-evolving space market. This rocket is set to make its maiden launch expected in the middle of this year. Rocket Lab has already secured their first customer for the new Neutron launch vehicle. On November 12th, the company announced a contract with an undisclosed commercial satellite operator for two Neutron launches, one in the middle of next year and another in 27. This deal could potentially expand to include more launches for the same customer. We see this agreement as a key milestone, marking the start of a promising collaboration that could ultimately lead to Neutron deploying this customer's entire constellation, said Rocket Lab CEO Pete Beck during the third quarter earnings call on November 12th. Rocket Lab has been very cautious in marketing Neutron. Until a vehicle is proven and flying any launch contract you sign is meaningless, Beck said during the earnings call. I'd rather enter the market with a reliable, high-performance vehicle that gets a premium price than rush to secure low-value contracts. While Neutron has yet to fly, Beck noted in his latest call the discussions with potential customers have matured and demand for launch slots is growing, emphasizing that the new contract aligns with the company's previously stated target launch price of $55 million for Neutron. We are not going to offer heavily discounted Neutron launches just because it's a new vehicle, added Adam Spice, Rocket Lab's CFO. The company plans to gradually scale up their launch cadence. Following an initial test flight this year, Rocket Lab aims to conduct three launches next year and five in 27, and eventually ramp up to seven or more a year, following a similar growth trajectory to what we achieved with Electron, Beck explained. Historically, it's rare to see any launch system scale up significantly faster than this. Rocket Lab is currently deep into the qualification testing of Neutron's flight hardware, including vehicle structure and the Archimedes engine, which underwent its first hot fire test in August at the Stennis Space Center in Mississippi. Over the past quarter, we've doubled our engine test cadence in Mississippi, and now we have multiple engines on the test stand. Neutron is a crucial component of Rocket Lab's broader ambitions, which include deploying its satellite constellation. Pete Beck previously hinted at this initiative, describing it as the company's third pillar alongside launch services and spacecraft production, both of which will support the constellation. We are not yet ready to disclose details about the constellation or its intended application. However, we built some strong foundation across launch space systems to enable it when the time is right. Beck further highlighted the importance of a reusable high cadence launch vehicle, saying SpaceX's use of Falcon 9 for deploying Starlink. Without a reliable, frequently reusable launch system, everything else becomes irrelevant. Neutron is the key to unlocking that potential. Ambition and confidence are commendable, but that doesn't mean Rocket Lab is without challenges. Although Neutron's lightweight carbon composite structure provides significant performance advantages, there are lingering questions about its long-term durability. Unlike stainless steel, which has demonstrated exceptional resilience through multiple launches and re-entries, the ability of carbon composites to withstand the stresses of frequent reuse is unproven. This raises concerns about the potential maintenance costs and long-term reliability, which could impact the competitive edge. Despite its promising design and advanced technology, Neutron's performance remains theoretical until its first flight. Key components like the Archimedes engines and clamshell fairing need to prove their functionality in the real world. Any delays, malfunctions, or subpar performance during initial testing and launches could pose significant obstacles to Rocket Lab's ambitions, highlighting the inherent risk of pioneering new aerospace technologies. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks for joining us and see you next time.